റോഡ് ട്രാഫിക് ആക്സിഡൻസ് ഇൻട്രൊഡക്ഷൻ റോഡ് ട്രാഫിക് ആക്സിഡൻസ് ഇഞ്ചുറി ആൻഡ് ഡെത്ത്സ് ഡ്യൂ ടു റോഡ് ട്രാഫിക് ആക്സിഡൻസ് ആർ എ മേജർ പബ്ലിക് ഹെൽത്ത് പ്രോബ്ലം ഇൻ ഡെവലപ്പിംഗ് കൺട്രീസ് വെർ മോർ ദാൻ എയ്റ്റി ഫൈവ് പെർസെൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് ഓൾ ഡെത്ത്സ് ആൻഡ് നയൻറ്റി പെർസെൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് ഡിസബിലിറ്റി അഡ്ജസ്റ്റഡ് ലൈഫ് ഇയേഴ്സ് വർ ലോസ്ഡ് ഫ്രം റോഡ് ട്രാഫിക് ഇഞ്ചുറീസ് ഇൻ മോസ് കേസസ് ആക്സിഡൻസ് ആർ കോസ്ഡ് ബൈ ദ ഫോൾട്ട് ഐദർ ഡ്യൂ ടു മാൻ മെഷീൻ or the method there are a certain pattern of injuries which differ from the driver passengers and the pedestrian identifying these injuries are important from the point of view of reconstruction of the scene of the accident injuries to the pedestrian When a speeding vehicle hits the pedestrian, he does sustain some injuries due to the impact. He may then be thrown forward and fall on the road to sustain some more injuries. Or he may be bounced upward only to fall on the same vehicle to sustain injuries. This time due to the subsequent impact by the vehicle. Accordingly, the injuries sustained by the pedestrian are classified under the following three categories. Primary impact injuries. These are the injuries that are sustained by the first impact of the vehicle. If the victim is an adult, the bumper of the car hits the legs and there may be fracture of the bones of the legs in addition to contusions and lacerations so primary impact injuries are those injuries sustained by the pedestrian by the first impact of the vehicle examples of the primary impact injuries are the bumper fractures to the bones of the legs radiator grill marks on the buttocks etc secondary impact injuries due to the impact by the vehicle the victim may be thrown upward and fall on the same vehicle this means that the victim comes in contact with the vehicle for the second time to sustain some more injuries all those injuries sustained due to the second impact are called secondary impact injuries These injuries may be in the form of bruises and lacerations. Secondary injuries. Instead of being thrown upward, the victim may be thrown forward too. If this happens, he falls on the road and from the force of this fall, he sustains injuries further. There is no second contact by the vehicle. such injuries sustained due to the fall on the ground are called secondary injuries these injuries generally are the bruises and the lacerated wounds if the vehicle drags the victim on the road he sustains abrasions of grazed type also known as brush burn abrasion injuries to the driver when the speeding vehicle meets with an accident the driver is thrown forward he forcibly hits the steering wheel this results in the fracture of the sternum from the ball of the steering wheel and fractures on the ribs from the rim of the steering wheel thus the chest plate becomes separated from the rest of the rib cage he is now said to have sustained flail chest injury in this condition the descent of the diaphragm during inspiration draws the broken part of the chest plate inwards in effect 
This results in volume of the chest to reduce during inspiration. Due to upward thrust of the diaphragm during expiration, the chest plate moves outward, thus increasing the volume of the chest. This is known as the paradoxical respiration. As the driver is the first person to visualize the impending collision, he puts effort to apply the brakes resulting in complete stretching of the legs. The force of impact of the collision moves from the heel upwards. As the neck of the femur is at an angle and the head of the femur is firmly secured in the acetabular fossa, the force of impact causes the fracture of the neck of the femur. Injuries to the front seat occupant The front seat passenger is thrown forward with a considerable force. He hits the windshield resulting in not only sustaining injuries like bruises and lacerated wounds, but also the neck gets hyperextended. The deceleration force forcibly brings him back resulting in hyperflexion of the neck. This type of hyperextension and hyperflexion of the neck, which causes cervical spinal injuries, is known as whiplash injury. The protruding parts of the inside of the vehicle, like the handles, etc., results in tear type of lacerated wounds. Note: It is most important to note down the height of the fracture from the heel. If the police apprehend the offending vehicle, the height of the bumper from the ground must be noted. The fracture site must correspond to the height thus measured. If the height of the bumper is at a higher level than the height of the fracture, it is prudent to conclude that the driver had made an attempt to apply the brake and the front portion of the vehicle thus had dipped forward, causing the fracture at a lower level. This does not absolve the driver from the crime, but at least indicates that there was an attempt to avoid the accident.